Welcome back to the Tomahawk. I'm Mike. I've got Matt and Justin with me. And we have a special guest, Dave Hansen from the movie Slapshot. Also NHL player, former NHL player. Dave, how are you doing, man? Doing pretty good, Mike. How are you, Matt and Justin doing? We're good. Fantastic. Hanging in there. We are doing well. We are in Chicago. Where are you located at? I'm in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, nice. so how's uh, how's the Blackhawks uh, looking going into the playoffs? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh, geez, I forgot. Sorry. Uh, I knew that was coming. I, sh- I should have I seen that coming from a mile away. <laughs> uh, tough year. Yeah, tough year. Yeah. yeah. Talk about crash and burn. Yeah. But um, but anyways, anybody, everybody, I want you to know if you, uh, Dave has a website, cameo.com, and you can get him. He'll do a cameo for you. Matt has actually uh, done this with them, and it turned out spectacular, cameo.com. And what did you search, Matt? Search for Slapshot? I actually searched Slapshot, and there he was. But I'm just giving you goalies out there a warning. He's going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> One way or the other, right? He's going to get you. He's going to get you. Whether he's doing a flyby and putting a stick behind the the skates and you fall on your butt, he's going to get you. (laughs) So, Dave, are are you currently living in Pittsburgh? Because I know you're from Minnesota, right? Yeah, I've been out in Pittsburgh since uh, early 90s. Moved out here actually to work for the Penguins. Started out with the Penguins when I came out, and now I'm managing a – Big sports facility for a university in town that's got a couple of Division One hockey teams and a bunch of other fun stuff. So I've been on here for a while and uh, still got ties back to the Midwest. I mean, Chicago and the North Stars were my two teams growing up and, you know, had uh, had the thrill of being able to play against Bobby Hall you know, for a couple of years and, you know, and a few of the other guys from, from back in the day. So. Uh, even though I, you know, cheer for Pittsburgh now that I'm here, you know, anytime Chicago and, and uh, now the Wild, of course, uh, mm-hmm. make a run for it, which hasn't happened for quite a while. But uh, you know, I'm there <laughs> ready to year. get on the bandwagon. Yeah, Dave, I'm curious. Since you're you're a Minnesota <laughs> fan, would you consider yourself a Stars fan as well, or is it more of a Wild type of a thing? Uh, not Stars at all. No, it'd be more <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Okay. In fact, you know, where where the, the Excel Energy Center is, is literally the location I grew up playing my high school hockey at. So uh, so I got a lot of roots there, a lot of friends still. Billy Garrett's a good buddy of mine. You know, I hope I wish him only success. And, of course, you know, Boudreaux, who was there for a couple of years, uh, has a little bit of slap shot history as well. So, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of little ties back there that keeps me coming back. Wow. So do you get do you get a chance to go back home and and do any kind of hockey clinics or anything like that? No, I've hung up the skates. I actually uh, had a hip replaced a few years ago, and um, and got out and skated a little bit, uh, but really to the point where you know the hip was feeling fine, but my feet hurt so bad from in the friggin' skates. I said that's it, you know, that mm-hmm. gave it up. But you know, did enough Zamboni skiing in my days, enough hockey playing. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, <laughs> I just decided I'll just keep my feet planted on ground these days. Well, that's great. What did you? What was your experience like with the with the Penguins organization? Oh, first class organization. But you know, I came back when I started out with them. It was uh, like I said, early '90s. They were still in the old igloo. Um, you know, Mario actually was still playing, and uh, and um, uh, I'm trying to think. Jack Kelly was the was the president and Craig Probably Patrick Yager. was the GM. Too, right? Yeah, Yager was there. You know, had cool. had pretty exciting time. Pretty exciting hockey players there. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it was you know great great organization at the time. Even uh, better now. You know, because it's a whole new era and they got the new arena and, and uh, exciting times. But first class operation. Go ahead, Matt. Well, Dave, you played for the North Stars and the Red Wings. Uh, how was Detroit? I have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, I actually think I got more FaceTime and Slapshot than I did in, uh, with the Red Wings and the North Stars. But um, Detroit sucked. Uh, other than being <laughs> That's in what we chant to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was the last, and you guys, when you guys are too young to remember this, but if you're an historian, it was the last year that the Red Wings played in the Olympia Arena, the old Olympia, and mm-hmm. uh, which was really uh, a barn. It was atrocious. Um, 
but it was home. But the team sucked too. You know, in fact, I think uh, <laughs> we, I think the nickname was the Dead Wings. Uh, the de- yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, so you know, thank goodness uh, they did move me on. In fact, that's when uh, that was a year when the NHL and WHA had their first uh, trade between the two leagues, where they traded me and Steve Durbano off for uh, Tim Sheehy and, and backlog Netamaski. So imagine that I got traded for a hall of famer. Uh, and, uh, wow. <laughs> and you know, I went to WHA and had a blast. I, I also heard some rumors that Herb Brooks was your coach. Is that true? Well, he was for a short time. Herbie, uh, back in 72, Herbie was, uh, it was in his, the start of his inaugural year at the university of Minnesota. Uh, and prior to that, he was coaching junior hockey in Minnesota. And, and I was uh, a senior in high school at 71, 72 year. And uh, Herbie, um, through a, um, actually through a sports writer who uh, wrote for the local St. Paul paper and covered high school sports and college sports as well as the pros, kind of started following me around my high school year and introduced uh, Herbie to me and, and vice versa. And, um, you know, I actually had – had visions of going off and playing uh, college football uh, out of high school. And uh, Herbie came knocking at my door and said, uh, we'd like to have you be a gopher. And, and never in my wildest dreams did, uh, did I think that was even, you know, a possibility uh, playing hockey for the Minnesota Gophers. But, you know, there's not a kid in Minnesota that didn't want to be a gopher. So yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I dropped all aspirations of moving on to play college football and um, went and played uh, at the university the first year, Herbie was the coach, but I wasn't good enough to play for the varsity team that he was coaching, even though we practiced with the varsity all the time. I was stuck on the JV. So I pretty much spent about a year, year and a half at the U. And, and again, you know, to impatience and immaturity, uh, I didn't hang in there with Herbie. I decided to go off and play junior hockey and, and took that path then after, uh, after having a good experience with Herbie, actually, for about a year and a half. That's hmm. awesome. That's excellent. Uh, Dave, I got to ask you, I got to ask you a question. I know Christian, your son, he played at Notre Dame in the NCAA. Uh, he eventually got to play with the Maple Leafs. Being just a hockey dad in general, what was it like to get to see your son play in the NHL just like you did and then also get to play in a market like Toronto? Well, it was really cool. I mean, the biggest thrill I had was watching him play with at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he took uh, he and of course his teammates made a run for the national championship. I think it was his junior year and lost out to Boston College in the uh, in the championship game. Mm-hmm. So he came up short there. But you know that was just a blast. But <clears throat> then to uh, you know literally on a, on a a ride home from Grand Rapids after they lost out in the uh, in the regionals to Bemidji of all of all teams, <laughs> uh, you know, in the car I got a call from Brian Burke, who's an old Minnesota buddy of mine, but he was he was the uh, GM of Toronto and right. and flat out said right then and there in the car ride home, uh, hey, we want to sign Christian. Wow. Yeah. So it was it was awesome. really cool. Yeah. So literally, that's incredible. You know, in a matter of three days, Christian was under contract and playing for the Maple Leafs, which was unbelievable. And and his first game was on the road in all in all places in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so his mother and I, you know, drove six hours from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia to sit in the stands and watch him come out and and do the rookie lap where they send them out. <laughs> yeah, you know, warm ups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the thing in Philly though, every I mean the place is full in Philly just for warm ups and he, you know, he did the rookie yeah. lap out there by himself and it was it, it was a thrill. I mean I thoroughly enjoyed watching him uh, his entire pro career and mm-hmm. and uh, it just, you know, I couldn't have been more happy for him and more excited for myself. Excellent. So Dave, uh in your, w- at what point did you realize? Yeah, I want to, I want to play, I want to play hockey. You know, like I'm, you know, was it as a kid? Was it? Were you in, you know, like in high school? And you're like, yeah, I think that I could, I could really play. You know, Mike, I really didn't think I, I really could play past the high school. You know, at the time, I was a three sport athlete in St. Paul in the high school, which was not uncommon for you know athletes. Um, uh, especially at you know back in those days, which was you know 
mid to late sixties, early seventies. And, and, uh, you know, I played baseball, football and hockey, uh, actually loved baseball more than all three of the sports thought I was the best at football and, uh, but played mostly hockey, you know, because the winters are so long there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like I mentioned earlier, I actually thought, you know, I was being recruited, um, by a couple colleges to play football. And then, and then we had, I had some colleges, um, I'm trying to think of might've been Colorado and Wisconsin, you know, we're, we're knocking on a door tapping, I should say on the door, you know, about <laughs> an interest in hockey, but I really, you know, I, I wanted to play football and, uh, and again, until Herbie came knocking on the door, did I, did, did I, you know, I suddenly switched gears and, and, and decided to, uh, to go the hockey route. And, um, so like I said, a year and a half there under, under Herbie's tutelage, you know, I went off and played junior hockey in Minnesota, which was, of all people, for a fellow by the name of Doug Wu, who actually became almost as legendary as Herbie was in Minnesota as a, as a coach for the Gophers uh, later on. And uh, the same sports writer that uh, introduced me to Herbie and said, Herbie, you got to take a look at this kid, was the same guy that then went to Glenn Sonmore, who was the GM of the Minnesota Fighting Saints, and said, you know what, you might want to see about signing you know, Dave Hansen. And, and that's pretty much how it went. I mean, I just kind of went along and kept playing the game, not really looking to the next level until it was right in front of me. Um, and then I paid attention to it because I just loved playing. I, I didn't really care about what was going to happen next the next year. I just, as long as I kept playing hockey, and, and as a result, that's kind of the that's kind of the approach I took uh, when I first signed my first pro contract, and for the next ten years of playing professional hockey. Wow! So after high school, you went to uh, you went to junior. You played junior hockey, right? Well, after right, right, clearly right out of high school is when I went to the University of Minnesota. So the true freshman. Okay. Uh, you know, unlike today where most high school kids, unless you're really the phenom, most high school kids that have college aspirations, they end up playing a year or two of junior hockey so they can mature and, and develop. And then, uh, then they move on to college. So yeah, literally right out of humble high school on the west side of St. Paul, I I went right across the river over to University of Minnesota and started out there with Herbie and then spent a little time there and then jumped over into junior hockey and finished out uh, pretty much the last year and a half there when I, until I was 20 years old and then signed a contract. So how did the movie Slapshot enter your life? How did, how did that go about? Well, the, the Minnesota Fighting Saints farm team was in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, it was a... Uh, the Johnstown Jets played in a league that was the way the Charlestown Chiefs played in the uh, in the Federal League. Um, it was the bottom rung of the minor league ladder. Um, but, you know, myself and the three Carlson brothers were all under contract with the Minnesota Fighting Saints as well as a few other guys. And again, you know, we got sent to Johnstown. There was also players from the Blues, St. Louis Blues under contract there from Calgary. So it was a smattering of uh, some NHL contracted players and WHA players, as well as just some some minor league players that were signed specifically to play there. So that team we had that year, which was a conglomerate of, of, of those players that I just described to you, you know, just like in a movie, we we were a rough and we, rough and tumble team. You had the three brothers. You had Killer Hanson. Uh, you had some goal scorers, <laughs> some college boys, uh, some whack job goaltenders. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and the we hair make me it. sick. <laughs> yeah, those fans make me puke. Blah blah. <laughs> um, and we went on and we won, we won the championship that year. Just, you know, we were, I think we were in seventh place when we finished up the regular season, got in the playoffs and, and won the championship. Wow. Uh, you know, in, in a town that the mills were closing. I mean, everything you see in Slapshot is what happened that year in wow. Johnstown. And so one of the players on the team was a, 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 a you know, an Ivy League guy, kind of like Ned Braden in the movie, who was mm -hmm. playing playing with us and his sister Nancy Dowd was uh, a screenplay writer in Los Angeles and and as the story was told to me he one night in a bit of a drunken stupor 
kind of bleeding <laughs> bleeding his heart out to his sister saying oh my god you can't imagine you know where i'm at i'm in this town the mills are closing <laughs> trying to sell the team you know we got these three brothers on the team and this guy called killer and we ride buses <laughs> and, you know and and they're talking about selling the team and she says to him well who owns the team right and he says well i don't know who owns the team so she came into town and spent some time, you know, watching us and, and everything was going on. And I guess, you know, the light bulb went off in her head and she went back to L.A. And and her brother, the player I'm talking about, Ned Dowd, you know, he would send off notes to her and send off little tape recordings to her of, you know, things that went on each day. And <laughs> and so she wrote the script. So so that was the 74-75 season that all that went on. <clears throat> so we were back there again in the 75-76 season. And that's when they started casting actors to play the roles. And they were getting, you know, A-listed actors like Nick Nolte and Peter Strauss and John Travolta. And, you know, of course they had Newman. But, you know, they wanted these guys to play, the, you know, the, the Hanson brothers. And no way. Killer Carlson. Yeah. But they couldn't skate. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know one of them broke his ankle trying to learn how to skate another one got you know slammed it through his shoulder out fell into the board so and so finally they got so frustrated ned dowd was actually uh you know the player that i mentioned earlier they actually hired him because he decided not to play anymore hired him to come down and try to teach these people how to skate and he said listen he says <laughs> they can't skate there's nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, so no why don't you just go yeah. back? Yeah, why don't you just go back and try these guys, you know, to play themselves? And so that's kind of what happened in short. They came back <laughs> during the season, and and uh, Jack, one of the third brothers, uh, actually ended up uh, going up to Edmonton playing with the Oilers uh, during the season. So they came back, had us do a little script reading, and and <laughs> – I say, despite the awful job we did of trying to read a script, <laughs> they said, well, you know, let's just give it a try. So they stuck me in as a third brother, brought in Jerry Hauser to play the Killer Carlson role. And, <laughs> yeah, he was great. Uh, and then, yeah, oh, he was awesome. Yeah, he nailed he, it. He, yeah. He did a terrific job. But, you know, and that kind of that's kind of how it went. And they stuck us in front of camera, and then we were off and running. Wow. That's, that's so interesting because, you know, when I first saw the movie – you know, I was always like, I wonder how they came up with the story for this movie, you know, especially with it's the a documentary, especially yeah, <laughs> with them trying to figure out who the owner is. You know, like I, I thought that that was really funny how like nobody knew who the owner was, yeah. you know, and uh, that's so great. What was it like working with 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 Paul Newman? Like at what point did he did he come in? Well, really, you should read phrase that question you should say what was it like for paul newman working with us? <laughs> i apologize <laughs> that, <laughs> you know that i gotta look kind of a i think it's a bit of a funny story you know my first uh introduction to paul was we were actually still in the play we were in the playoffs uh we were playing uh, philadelphia i think it was and uh so i'm having a pregame nap and i'm rooming with two other guys one is bruce boudreau as i mentioned earlier yeah, the other one was, was uh yeah a fellow by the name of henry taylor and we were on the second floor of a third three-story house um i think the carlson brothers might have been on the top floor and uh so we're, i'm having a pre-game nap we got a game that night so i'm hearing I, I, out of a sleep i wake up and i to knocking on on the door and i'm thinking you know come on when do you guys get up and get that i'm trying to so you know Boudreau <laughs> slept like a, a rock and and hank taylor didn't get up so i finally get out of bed you know and i walk up to the door and i'm in my underwear and my dirty socks and i open the door <laughs> and i'm looking at this guy now this guy i'm looking down at this guy because the steps came up to the uh, to the threshold and to the house but i'm looking down at these most magnificently blue eyes <laughs> and you know i'm kind of ha- and, and he looks at me and he says oh my gosh he says well he says sorry he says are you dave and i says yeah and he says well i'm paul newman and he puts his hand out and <laughs> oh my gosh yeah and i says oh well yeah i guess you are paul hi you know, <laughs> my hand. And he says 
He says, well, geez, I'm sorry. He says, did I wake? I said, yeah, you did, actually. I, you know, we got a game tonight. This and that. <laughs> and I was all apologetic and this and that. And he says, well, listen. He says, we want to buy I said, well, what's up? What do you want? He says, well, I got these guys from the studio. They want to look at what a, what a hockey player's apartment looks like. And, you know, do you mind if we come in? I says, listen, I don't mind. I says, just know that I'm going back to bed. I'm closing the door. I says, you know, when you get done, just, you know, make sure you close the door behind you and he says fine <laughs> we'll take care of it so i start walking back and says hey dave i said yeah he says uh he says you know the race is on you know the, i don't know and i don't know what race was but he says you know the race is on you mind if i sit down and watch tv you know in your room i said no <laughs> go ahead paul uh, you know good night goodbye dave yeah paul what he says you got any beer in the fridge said, yeah he says, paul there's beer in the fridge grab as much as you want i don't uh-huh. care you know i'm uh, so that was my first meeting wow. with Paul Newman. Wow, but, that's awesome. But I can tell you, you know, he was, we all actually, you know, we spent like literally three months in a row together filming slap shots, seeing each other pretty much every day. And and he was just a quality guy. Uh, unless you know he was Paul Newman and he was a superstar, you would have thought he was just another regular guy on the set. That's how mm-hmm. he behaved. He treated everybody that way. He'd go out, drink with us, you know, buy the beers, or we'd buy him the beers and, we hit the bars until somebody, you know, started getting a little crowded around him and he said, <laughs> kind of that shouting. But we had a blast with him. He was he was a big practical joker and loved to give it as much as take it. And uh, terrific guy, just a wonderful guy. Yeah, he nailed Coach Dunlop too. He, I thought that was like a perfect coach. Like his speeches and pregame stuff, <laughs> nailed it. Well, you know, a a little trivia that a lot of people don't know is that he was not the original actor to uh, cast to play Reggie Dunlop. It was actually Robert De Niro. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so George Roy Hill, the director, uh, when he, you know, first, from what I've been well told, when he first sat down with De Niro and started talking about the movie and this and that, he flat out said, well, can you skate? (laughs) And De Niro says, well, no, I can't skate, you know, but we can work around that. And I mean, we can change the script here, this and that, blah, blah. George Roy Hill wouldn't have anything to do with it. He says, you know, sorry, you know, Robert, you're not the guy. You know, and I got rid of him and went right to Newman yeah. right away. So wow. Newman was had, good on the ice? Newman was Newman was a good skater. That's uh, awesome. You know, he, I didn't know Yeah, he grew that. up in Ohio, you know, so he, he skated. He said he used to skate on the ponds and this and that. But where he struggled when we started out was – putting a hockey stick in his hand because he never had a hockey stick in his hand he didn't play any hockey so he really Mm -hmm. didn't know what to do so you know he was such he was so athletic and he worked so hard every day you'd work hard on the ice and you know try to become a better skater but he would say hey guys you got to help me you know what do i do with a hockey stick how do i do (laughs) this and that and this and that so we would spend time with him and he would then go off in the corner and practice you know stick handling or holding the stick or whatever he would do and you know certainly pulled it off you know came across really well on screen wow that's incredible so so what was your favorite scene dave i know my favorite scene was probably your guys's first shift where you probably i couldn't maybe 20 plus penalties in that (laughs) first shift but it was awesome what's yours uh, you know, it's funny. I don't know that I have a favorite scene. I, I think that, you know, we, we would do one thing George, George Ray Hill realized right, right from the start after he took a couple, uh, takes of us trying to do our first act and is that we couldn't act. Uh, so he kind of gave us, you know, a little bit, he actually gave us a lot of leeway where, you know, we had our lines, our scripted lines and, and, so he would set the scene up for us, and then he, and then he'd kind of, you know, let us freestyle do it how we, yeah. yeah, how we want to do it, ad lib this and that. So, so you know, there's little tidbits, you know, that we did in our ad libbing that was kind of fun, you know, similar like when we're, you know, we're in a hotel room and he walks by and he sees that we're playing with our race cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you know, the only scripted lines there was hey coach we're on the road we're set to go tell us when we're on the you road know, yeah. yeah yeah set to go yeah. tell us when and you know <laughs> hey guys well you know i'm shuffling the lines you know i'll let you go and he walks off so from that point on it was all ad lib steve's running <laughs> around and i'm saying 
you know, you broke the darn car. I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of those little things where you kind of know where I did this and that and, and it was done this way and that way, kind of ad lib that kind of just add up to a lot of fun mm-hmm. stuff. That's my father-in-law's favorite line, him and his assistant coach. Every, every other line is, hey, we're on the road. I mean, we're, we're on the road. <laughs> yeah. Got to give him a little shout out to my father-in-law. But That's awesome. <laughs> Go on ahead. Uh, Dave, I got to ask you, when when you got hired to you know play the role, what was going through your mind? Did you think, you know, dream, dream sequence 40 years later, this was going to be a movie that everybody still talks about and loves? Or was it like, hey, this is going to be something I'm going to get to show my family down the road and that'll be about it? Well, we actually thought that we were going to be the next Academy Award winner. You know, <laughs> good looking studs. The chick loved the glasses. You know, uh, no, truthfully, you know, the Carlson brothers and myself, the Carlson brothers are Minnesota boys as well. They're up from the, the Iron Range up on, up in, uh, um, I'm trying to think, the Virginia, Minnesota. And, you know, me being from St. Paul. So our standard off season was at the end of the season we packed up the car we drove home and then we'd spend the next you know the rest of the summer before training camp doing nothing but playing softball drinking beers and eating chicken wings and onion rings (laughs) Uh, you know so and then we go to training camp literally to get in shape unlike now people are in shape before to go to training camp so this was kind of this was just unique we had no idea they kind of said hey guys you know we want you to be in a movie uh, we're willing to uh, pay you, you know, actually pay us more than what we were making, you know, playing weekly. Yeah, yeah playing. Yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll we'll pay for your apartment. You know, you'll have food on set. You know, they gave us all that stuff. We said, oh, OK, what the hell? I mean, we, you know, we've got nothing better to do. We'll, we'll just stay here and we'll, we'll see how it goes. So had no idea, no concept. I mean, it was it was um, it actually got to the point where couple months into it it got it was so friggin boring and you know we had you know again you're talking 19 20 21 year old kids Mm -hmm. you know we had to oftentimes be up at six in the morning to get on set and sit and get in makeup and then sit there all friggin day and then you know by six or seven o'clock at night thinking you're gonna do your scene they they, they come in and say sorry guys we didn't get you today that's a wrap you know Mm -hmm. well that lasted for you know a good month and to the point where Instead of bringing in beer into the locker room, uh, we <laughs> crack a beer here. Then it turned into a twelve pack, and and then you know, then there's a couple times where you know they finally get around to us by the end of the day, and they say, "Okay, bring the Hanson brothers out." And we go out there, and we're so friggin' <laughs> hammered by that time. We, you know, they say, oh, "That's a wrap. We'll do it. We'll, you know, we'll, you'll be the first thing tomorrow morning." Uh, oh you know. man, <laughs> oh, oh, that's man, awesome. That's go ahead, Justin. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we, we, we're, we've been talking a lot about what's been going on in the NHL, just in general, not to, not to shift gears completely, but Dave, what's your take on just the way the league is in general now? I mean, obviously we just had that big, uh, big brouhaha with, you know, Tom Wilson and the Rangers and everything, but where do you see the league going? Do you think, uh, fighting is on its way out? Do you think fighting is still needed? Do you think it's getting too soft? What, uh, what's your take on the current NHL product? The answer is yes to all of that. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess I guess like anybody that played in a certain area that you know their favorite area era was when they played. Um, you know, back back in the day, you know, when I played, you know, the game was such that there was a role for you know the fighting, for the enforcer, for you know the guy out there to keep other players honest. Uh, to have intimidation, physical intimidation, being part of the game plan, you know, part of the makeup of the team, you know, right? Part of a strategy, um, and then, but the game has shifted. So, you know, to answer, I think some of your questions there, you know, fighting is going out of the game because it's not a part of the game. Um, mm-hmm. They're calling it so tight anymore that um, you know there really isn't that intimidation factor or you know you got tom wilson back in the day if tom played back in the day and tom wilson you know took a run at uh patrick kane let's you know for example let's just say you know or pretty yeah or pretty for that for that matter but you know you would have let's say for an example in chicago you'd have a bobby probert Mm -hmm. uh, there to come out yeah (laughs) and say hey you know yeah oh yeah grooms you know you have Stu out there and just flat out and and 
you know, either go right up to Wilson and say, hey, you either knock that off or I'm going to go after Ovechkin or I'm going to go after, you know, you know, one of your guys. Right. Or I'm just going to knock your block off. And, you know, if he was a legitimate tough guy and Wilson is, you know, the two would fight and then it would, it would settle things down and there was an understanding, you know, but nowadays you only, you don't have a counter to Wilson. You know, you, the only guy that really could maybe match up to him is Reeves, you know, in, right. in, in uh, Vegas. Ryan yeah. Reeves yeah. in Vegas, you know, but they don't play each other, you know, and, and so every team doesn't have that anymore where in a day you did, you know, Gretzky had McSorley and, and you know, and, and other, and Semenko and other guys. So, you know, you didn't touch Gretzky. You let Gretzky play his game and vice versa. So the game today, you know, the guys obviously are faster, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're, they're, you know, overall they're more skilled. I wouldn't say that there's guys that are more skilled than a Lemieux or a Gretzky or a Hull or, you know, or Keon or, or a Gordy Howe, but, you know, Overall, there's more skilled players, you know, even out. And and so, you know, they don't play as physical anymore because it's just not that is phasing out in the regular season. Um, you know, playoffs, it picks up a little better. Love playoff hockey now. Oh, I can't um, wait. Yeah, but I do miss I do miss the fightings. When you say the big brouhaha with, with the Capitals and Rangers, the I literally brawl. thought it Yeah, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, it was a joke, you know, and and part of it is certainly because you got face shields now. I mean, right? You yeah, know, you break your hand. Yeah, I can't you imagine trying to punch yeah. one. Yeah, no. I mean, it was hard enough when the helmets came in. You had to fight with helmets, you know, hit helmets, but at least you had a face to target for. You <laughs> yeah. know, now you got you know you're lucky if you hit any flesh, you know, other than the the flesh on your knuckles, which is a good reason why they ought to let people wear the foil. You know, if they're going to have, they're going to keep fighting in the game, they're going to wear helmets and feet shield, they at least let people put on the floor. <laughs> Did, so who actually came up with that? Did you come up with that idea for the, for the foil? Well, Nancy Dowd, you know, the screenplay writer was, you know, so great, so creative. She, she literally captured all the nuances of the game and the characters of the game and this and that. So I'll give her credit for, elevating to foil on the knuckles from what we did. And what we did was the Carlsons and myself, when we first started playing in the league that year, we would, excuse me, we would tape up our, our knuckles with, with tape, with uh, sock tape, you know, white tape, uh, yeah. medical tape, right? you know, to protect the knuckles and kind of give us an edge to help cut the guy, this and that. So, you know, after we, <laughs> After we kind of went through a few rounds, you know, during the season, the commissioner, Commissioner Timmons, put a rule, instigated a rule into the, the, the book that says you can no longer have tape on your hands uh, unless you're, you're injured. But if you get into a fight with tape on your hands and, and you cut the other guy, you know, you get an added penalty and you also get thrown out of the game. So our coach then at that time was a, in the offseason, was a golf pro at the local country club. So his name was Dick Roberts. He was actually the guy that played the referee in the first scene uh, of the, uh, of the movie, the first referee in the stripes. And, and so we said to Dick, when they put their rule in, we said, Hey coach, um, do you think maybe you could get us uh, each a pair of golf gloves? He says, golf gloves for what? He says, well, you know, just, can you do that? And he said, yeah, I can do that. And so he did it. Well, the golf clubs back then are certainly much different than they are today. Today, they're the very thin synthetic type material. Well, back then yeah. they were, you know, they were leather and they were pretty thick leather. And so what we did is we took the golf club, we took the rasp, we scraped up the knuckles on the golf clubs. We put them in water and overnight we put them on the radiator behind our bench. And then the next day when we were ready for the game, we put on these crusty, hard, crunchy golf clubs on our hands and go out and play the game. And before they got all sweaty and soft, we made sure we dropped our gloves and we had, uh, you know, something other than tape on our hands, you know, a replacement for the tape to be able to give us that advantage. So, <laughs> so Nancy Dell kind of took all of that and she elevated it to put foil, putting the foil on. Wow. Oh day. man, that's, that's great. incredible. 
Oh man, do you guys have uh, have anything else you want to ask, uh, Dave? Yeah, Dave, I got one more for you. Uh, do you have a favorite current NHL player? Well, probably because I'm in Pittsburgh and I get to see him every night. You know, whether on TV or down at the game. But you know, Crosby, I just marvel at the things that Crosby does, and mm-hmm. for sure. and I yeah, often, sure. you know, and I often say to people, you know, they say, "What are you talking about?" You know, the regular, you know, the, the fly by fan of this and that and it's it's kind of like you know unless you have an educated eye because the game is so fast and it's so tight and there's so little room out there anymore unless you really watch him do you really appreciate the amazing things he does you know mm-hmm. yeah. unlike back in the day where you know lemieux was so big and, and the game was a little bit more guys had a little bit more space even though it was a clutch and grab you know lemieux and gretzky and those guys you could see more of what they did now you know like i say fast the size the speed um you know they tighten up uh you know everything's kind of tightened up in a little section you watch crosby and it's just it's amazing that he just does things that kind of like oh my god how did he do that you know so i would say you know yeah and and again because i see him so much and i know there's you know i'd love to be watching mcdavid play every mm-hmm. night and you know and, and other players you know out there doing stuff or vets and scoring goals you know those kind of guys but uh you know i'd have to say crosby you know is probably at the top of my list i remember cool. when crosby was coming into the league and you know he was being touted as the next one you know and sid, and sid the kid and uh, to be honest with you if you look he was he came across you know in hindsight now just as he was touted to be when he was when he was younger you know he he really brought the game into you know the next the next level you know when Nathan McKinnon came into the league you know he started training with with uh with Crosby because you know Sid is so strong on his skates you know and he's you know it takes a lot to bring him down especially when he has the puck are there any other would you say are there any other players that stand out to you that you would say that were were marketed and and you know coming out of juniors you know coming into the draft and and really came along like like Crosby did. Yeah, maybe well, some I, goalies, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the next superstar goaltender? The last superstar goaltender that you talk about coming in the league, even to this day. You know, they're, they're not. Uh, I can't even think of one day. Yeah, I, no, yeah, I got I, nothing. I, uh, uh, Vasilevsky, Tampa Bay. Come on, he's not a superstar. <laughs> Oh, he is. He's going to win the Vesna again. Yeah. Just because he well, wins the Vesna doesn't mean he's a superstar. Yeah, it's kind of like the Vesna. It's all about those the rings. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, I'd say McDavid. Uh, you know, I think every, McDavid has lived up to everything. It's just too bad he's on a lousy hockey team. Yeah, uh, right. You know, it's true. But right. you put him, you know, in, in one of the top teams, and, you know, he's, he's doubling what he's doing there. Uh, so, yeah, I would say, you know, McDavid. I don't think mm-hmm. it's any question about him. I got one last question for you. You know, Edmonton for years has has been getting the you know the first round pick, you know, after first round pick after first round pick. Do you think that maybe there should be a provision in the rules saying that after you've had so many first round picks in a determined amount of time that you have to you have to give up that pick to like the say the second worst team? <laughs> Uh, you know, I haven't put a thought, a lot of thought into that one. I've, I have never even heard that, that idea thrown out there before, but I would just say off the cuff. No, uh, you know, um, you want to, you want teams that are that low to rebuild. You know, you look through the history of good franchises, you know, and teams that have gone on, they, they've done it through the draft like that. And they built, I mean, t- Pittsburgh was an example of that. You know, when Crosby came on board and and then, uh, you know, who did they get uh, shortly after? Was it Malkin? Malkin. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, and uh, so, no, it, it's just a shame, though, that, you know, they get those players and they still can't put a team around them to, to win. But uh, but I would say without putting a whole lot of thought in it, you know, to, to answer your question, no, I, I don't I don't think so at this point. But I could change my mind just mm-hmm. Give me six Bud Lights and uh, <laughs> keep the conversation going. <laughs> it, it took us. It took us a while to get good too. We we had to go through some hard time. We got 
Oh, Dave's yeah. Kane. Chicago's and, you a know, good cha- example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and they did a wonderful job, and then they made the brilliant move of getting rid of uh, Quinville. I mean, you know. Yeah, like, that's geez, still. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. I don't even. <laughs> we still uh, have nightmares about that one. We don't know what this coach is doing. We we just no. we don't know what he's telling his players before the game or what his yeah. system even is. It just doesn't make sense. No. Yeah. Well, the, I always say the players still have to play. I mean, it still boils down to the That's players. True. That's true. That. That's true. But the coach, uh, the coach, you know, puts the playbook together. Mm. Well, Dave, uh, this has been a great interview. Uh, you know, just listening, listen to your stories, man, and and listen to you talk here. It was great. Um, I had a fa- fantastic time uh, interviewing you and uh, I'm sure Matt and Justin did as well. Definitely. I oh, want to uh, say man. it again, cameo.com. If you want to get a cameo uh, deal with, uh, with Dave Hansen, he'll get you squared away. Matt has done it. It's, he, it was phenomenal. I watched the video. I, I thought it was hilarious. It was awesome. It was, it was yeah. hilarious. I, I, yeah. I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you, at, at first. He, he's tough. He's a tough guy. Made me yeah. glad I didn't play goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, do you have anybody you want to give a shout out to or, or, or anything that you want to say that you want to put out there? Uh, no, I think uh, I'm actually heading to Minnesota tomorrow. I'm going to drive up through Chicago and, uh, and uh, heading up there to go see some family and even stopping off there on the way back uh, for a little brief uh, hello to some folks. But no, I enjoyed guys. I enjoyed uh, talking with you. I'm glad you reached out. I wish you all the best. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Blackhawks, because uh, they're still one of my favorite teams, uh, get on the right track and and y'all got something uh, good to cheer about up there. <laughs> yeah, we got to get you back on maybe before next season, and you can we could break down the team. And if you're up for it, that'd be awesome. We'd love to have you. Yeah, sure, be happy to. I mean, awesome. I'd I'd love to ha- I'd love to get the the goalie roster on on people that are going to show up uh, to camp and just hear you go 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 <laughs> off on them all right down the line. To be honest with you. <laughs> I hope yeah. we sign a goalie just so I got some firepower for you. <laughs> well, I tell you one, you're not going to hire you to come on and be a goalie coach for him. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks again, Dave. This has been a blast. This All is right, the guys. Tomahawk, and we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>